Hello again! As you may or may not know, I am Eli the Computer Guy, and INE has invited me down to their offices down here in Durham, North Carolina to interview real IT and networking professionals. Today I'm here with Charles Stizza, Customer Support Engineer at Cisco Systems. That's right. I'm glad that you took the time to interview me. Yeah. So tell me, what is a customer support engineer at Cisco Systems? Sure, yeah. So this is, I mean, most people in the industry know this is tech. Okay, so yeah, that's yeah. We, we basically we are the uh, support for you know whatever product line uh, that Cisco has. You know, for example, uh, if you buy a support contract for your Nexus switch, yeah. um, you're going to get support from us here in RTP. Actually, we have several teams, obviously, but our local team here uh, we support. Um, I think not all we support the Nexus switches land, so things like 7K, 5K, 3K, that that sort of thing. So, okay. so when you say TAC, what does TAC mean? Uh, so it's actually uh, Technical Assistance Center, I think is what it stands for. So okay. uh, it's just basically, you know, anything that you're doing with that switch, uh, you know, protocol wise. Well, we have several teams, like we have teams that support routing protocols on it, but our mm -hmm. team is, we're considered the platform team. Okay? okay, so for example, if you're configuring OSPF on your 7K yeah. and you need some help with that, you would go to our routing protocols team. But if there's some issue with that, let's mm -hmm. say we have a hardware misprogram, it's something that's specific to that platform. Yeah you would work with us, you know, okay. and, and of course, you know, problems that customers have aren't just, hey, I can't configure it, it's usually they have it configured correctly, yeah. but it's still broken, you know, so that's yeah. kind, of, kind of where we come into play. It's things that are, things that break that yeah. really shouldn't break. So <laughs> that shouldn't break. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So then you have, you have about 10 years experience, right, ish? Yeah, it's a little, 11. Yeah, 11-ish. 11 11 yeah, let's call, let's call it around 11, yeah, sure, sure. Let's call it even 50. We'll just call it even 50. Yeah, no problem, man. <laughs> so, okay, so you started on your resume. Your first thing here is logistics coordinator at Smithway Motor Express. Yeah. So how do you go from supervisor of regional dispatch? Because this is a real job. So like a lot of people we interview, their first job is, I worked at McDonald's. And so you go, oh, okay. So if you were a bartender, it's obvious how you go Cisco or whatever. But like if you're already a supervisor of regional dispatch operations, pretty decent. How do you go from that to getting into technology? Sure. Great question. So yeah. when I graduated from college, I needed a job. I, and I'll be honest, I, you know, I'll, in the interest of candor, yeah. I didn't have like this vision, oh, I want to do this, I want to do that. I really did not know what I wanted to do when I got out of school. Okay. I didn't really care. I just wanted to make, I, just wanted, I knew I needed to have a job, right? That's right. all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I went out, I got, I got my parts, met my diploma in hand, yeah. uh, Bachelor of Science, and I uh, got a job, right? Okay, I just yeah. went out, I just went around and, and found the job yeah. who was hiring. And I had been working uh, part-time at school in trucking. That's all I knew. My dad was a, a mechanic and yeah. my my grandfather was a mechanic, and so we knew trucking. So yeah. that's what I did. I, I went to a truck company that saw, oh, you have you know have a little education here, so we think you'd be a good dispatcher. Okay. And so I did that for about four years, yeah, yeah. and it was decent pay. And um, that's in a nutshell, that's why I went there. Okay. Yeah. But you know, because I, I think what you're getting at here is well, what made you transition to IT? Yeah. Very simple. I just got bored. I just got bored. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It was not intellectually satisfying. Okay. There's so much more to employment than getting a good paycheck, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And once you once you work something that you realize, hey, you know, the money's good, the benefits are good, but boy, when I'm sitting at my desk from nine to five and I'm just not satisfied with what I'm doing, yeah. you really it's, it's it's a terrible feeling, you know. So, yeah. so I, I said I need to do something that I could transi transition to something that I think I would like, and, and I, I thought about IT for a few years, but I, I thought at the same time. Boy, I never could do that. You know, I didn't have much confidence. <laughs> okay, yeah, but yeah. I really one day just said, I need to, I need to do this. Yeah. I need to make a jump. And so I literally quit and uh, just made a kind of, a, you know, a plan to get into IT. Okay, yeah. And uh, what I did was is I got my A-plus certification. Okay, yeah, yeah. And so after getting that certification, yeah. I did my Network Plus certification. Okay. And then I, I got an entry-level IT job. So that, that's, how I, that's how I transitioned. So you quit before you even had anything. I did something that you should never do. Is I quit <laughs> my job. Yeah, yeah, okay. Before I had another job, and you know, your your dad says that. You know, your you hear <laughs> yeah, this all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never quit your job. But but I was so frustrated. Yeah. And I was just um, I needed to make just a quick change. <clears throat> so yeah, I, I made that jump, and my concern at the time I wasn't thinking about money. Yeah. I was thinking, can I get to a, a job that will make enough money that I like doing? Mm. And so that's what I did. So, so deciding on the A plus and the net plus, 
did somebody give you that advice? Did you just hear the radio and hear, oh, they told me to go A+. Because like, that's the thing, is, that's the problem. Is everybody says, I want to get into IT, but then how do you do it? So what was, what was, what was the actual, like, what, were you given advice or how did you decide to go on that path? Yeah, sure. So the A plus and CompTIA, who you know offers that that that's their certification. Um, it was really word of mouth in the industry. You know, people yeah. that that I knew were in the industry. Oh, okay. That it was kind of a well known entry level certification. You know, it yeah. was attainable. Now, yeah. I knew about, for example, the CCIE. Yeah. And I knew that wasn't where I was at. So it wasn't even like an option. That I didn't care about that. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. what I wanted to do, it, it was kind of twofold. I wanted to get some knowledge. Yeah. But instead of just kind of reading books or, you know, tearing apart computers, I wanted to have something to show for it. Okay. So I felt that the A plus and the Network Plus were a good fit for that. Okay, cool, cool. So, okay, then let's kind of start at the beginning then. So, so from Summit University, you're in Pennsylvania. Right, right. Um, and I notice you don't say what your bachelor's degree is. Actually, my, my bachelor's is just a bachelor's degree. And there's a, it's a long, convoluted story, <laughs> story behind yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But Summit University actually used to be a Bible college. It's actually called Baptist Bible College. Okay. And they upgraded or whatever, they, they recertified or whatever you call it, to a university. So all the degrees transitioned to just bachelors. Okay. So that's that's the story about it. So I my, officially my bachelor's degree is, is in nothing. But mm -hmm. the classes I took were in theology, uh, Bible, philosophy, uh, but I didn't have I didn't actually have a major, believe it or not. Huh, interesting. So then, okay, so you, then you did go get your master's. We'll talk about that later because that's mm -hmm. 2010. Mm -hmm. But then that's where we're trying to do the math here because 2010 is when you get your master's. But in 2005, you're an adjunct instructor at Wilbur Wright College. Great, great observation. So I got my first IT job. Yeah. This is this is a funny story. Okay. So I I went to Wilbur Wright College to take my A plus certification. Okay. Right. You know, you have to go to a I think it's Pearson or whatever the you know I, I forget the whoever administered uh, Pearson View I think it is that they were. So I went to take the certification, and I passed the exam. Right. And I was I was pumped. <laughs> and as I'm walking out. Yeah. One of the administrators says, hey, he's like, have, have I seen you around here before? I'm like, nope, nope. And she's like, well, where did you take your A-plus classes? And I said, well, I didn't take classes. I, 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 I just studied, you know, I got a book and I studied for two, three weeks and I, and I had some you know, knowledge of it. Yeah. And she said, you know, we have, we have an A-plus class here and we can't get our students to pass the exam. Would you be willing to teach our class for us? Uh, this is a true, one hundred percent true story. <laughs> Would you be willing to teach our teach our class? You know, and I'm okay. on the inside. I'm thinking, like this isn't real because I just passed this, and you want me to teach it? Yeah, yeah. But I th I thought, well, you know, I mean, I did pass it, so I guess if they can't pass it, I'm qualified. Mm. So you know, of course, I'm not going to say no. So so this was actually a part time job I got okay. teaching. Yeah, at, mm. at, at, at the community college there in Chicago. Yeah. So and uh, I taught that for several years. Part time, concurrently to my full time role. Yeah. Really interesting. Um, so then you got to Chicago. So was there any interesting story between Pennsylvania and Chicago? Like I actually am originally from Northeast Ohio, Youngstown. Okay. So yeah, yeah. I, I went to school in Northeast Pennsylvania. So I actually was technically when I was done from school, I really could have back to Ohio. Okay. Yeah. But then the company I was with move their office to Chicago. Actually, they closed their office. So that's that's really how I transitioned to Chicago. Was uh, through the. Uh, the logistics company, okay. and by the way, they're not in business anymore. So, <laughs> okay, so so then the the help desk job or your first job, that's the special agent at Geek Squad. So I was actually with uh, Geek Squad. I'm sure you've heard of them, and uh, worked for Geek Squad. <laughs> Listen, let me explain something. Let me explain something. <laughs> Did I want to work for Geek Squad? Like, was it like my dream? Absolutely not. But you know, one thing I learned. One thing I learned. No, in no. all seriousness, yeah. is that you cannot think of any job that you're better than. You know what I mean? You yeah. you have to really. You know, if it's someone's offering you a job. Yeah. You cannot be th have the mentality, I'm going to go there, you know, I'm better than this, but I'm going to do it and kind of just as all I can get and always kind of like have your nose. I, I think that's the worst approach. So yeah, yeah. my approach was, this is what I have now, yeah. and I'm going to work this to the best of my ability. Yeah. I'm going to do the best job I can. And I have found when you make those investments, I mean, you're investing in your reputation, yeah, right? Yeah. You invest in reputation, you get promoted very quickly. Hmm, and okay. so I went from, and I'll use specific numbers, I mean, you know, I don't mind. Yeah. I was hired there, I think, at $32,000, which, yeah. I mean, it's not fabulous money, but within two years, I was making double that, yeah. right? Okay. So, I mean, so, you know, just the case, you know, case in point, yeah. you just put your head down, you have a good work ethic, you invest in your, you know, by investing your reputation, you're investing yourself, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so, and also, other certifications I did at the time, 
And so, yeah, so yeah, I worked that job. It, was it humbling to wear a little black tie? Yeah, absolutely. And I, actually, I still have my Geek Squad badge. I'm, I'm very proud. It's, it's a proud thing. I'm, I'm badge number 2592. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so then, I guess that's one thing with Geek Squad. Like with a lot of these, uh, all these retail type companies, like I was talking to a, uh, an Apple store employee. Mm -hmm. And again, you see the retail person, and you're like, oh, that sucks. Why the hell are you here? And what you don't see is there actually is a lot of opportunity that's just simply behind the curtain, so you don't see it. Mm -hmm. So with Geek Squad, you were there for like three three years and three months. Exactly three, yeah, yeah right. Three, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so how much opportunity for advance? Because obviously, you go into Geek Squad, you just see the person behind the desk. But mm -hmm. they do do small business support. They do do. They actually do a lot of things people don't realize. Mm -hmm. How long could you stay there reasonably uh, and, and progress in your career if you wanted to? Yeah, sure. It's great. So my, my first job there wasn't the special agent. It was actually, I was behind the counter. Okay. I was the guy behind the counter taking, and you know, trust me, was I thrilled about that? Because I'm like, well, I'm in retail. This is something that has such a bad reputation. This is what you don't want to be doing. You know what I mean? <laughs> but again, I, I, I just did the best work that I possibly could. And, yeah. you know, people around me complained about how they didn't like to be there. They didn't, you know, oh, this is, you know, I'm going to be doing this and that. And, you know, yeah. I didn't do anything. I'm not, you know, I'm not patting myself on my I'm just saying this is what, what I did. Yeah. And within six months, I, I was able to get a new role in there, the on-site role. Yeah. And I was out of that. You know what I mean? Okay. So I will say that for me, my experience was there's, there's lots of room for uh, advancement. Yeah. If you do a good job, if you are honest, all those qualities you want an employee. Yeah. I, I would say my experience was, was fabulous. I had, I had great advancement opportunity. Yeah, yeah. Um, is that the experience of everybody? I, of course it's not. But my experience was very good. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Huh. So then you go from there, and then Windows Systems Engineer for three That's years right. at SWC Technology Partners. So who's who's that? What were you up to there? Yeah, sure. So SWC Technology Partners is a great uh, uh, company there, and it's actually in Oakbrook, Illinois. There, okay. and they um, are they cater to small medium business, hmm. and uh, Microsoft Partner, Cisco Partner, and I believe they're a VMware partner now. Hmm. But um, I was uh, that was kind of my big break. That was that hmm. was where. When they called me and offered me the salary that they offered me, I was like, you know, I, you know what I'm saying? I felt yeah. like it was really like, it was kind of like, okay, now I feel like I've got some experience yeah, yeah. and now I can command a, a higher market, you know, yeah, a better yeah. value, you know? Yeah. So that was, I feel like it was like kind of the first role where it was like, I was, I felt like I was making good, I felt very rewarded basically. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, basically went there, um, was there for about three years and was, uh, I was actually on site at a customer one of the customers for about three years there. Okay. Uh, so I was, I was a consultant and basically handled, uh, basically officially SaaS support there. But hmm. it was interesting, again, applying the idea of, I'm gonna do the best I can while I'm here. Yeah. While initially my role was to be kind of this like go-to person between SWC and the college. So basically, let's say for example, they had a network upgrade project. My job was to project manage that and get the right people plugged in consultants plugged in, yeah. but I didn't want that. I wanted to do the work. I wanted yeah. to be, you know, I, so I say, listen, yeah. you know, with, with the right attitude, I say, please allow me to work on this you know, project. I will do a good job for you. Here's, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll be accountable, all the things that are necessary. And so I got a chance to work on, on a network upgrade project, very large wireless LAN project, yeah. a virtualization project, storage area network projects, technologies that I, you know, years ago never even heard of before. Yeah, okay, yeah. so it was really, again, applying that principle of, being the best engineer you can, doing mm -hmm. the best work you can, yeah. um, being ambitious, you know, having that that eagerness to want to learn, yeah. applying all that stuff, it was it's very rewarding there. Okay, so that's that's yeah. kind of in a nutshell what that what that role was about. So then, so how did you go from Geek Squad to SWC? Did you actually put out your resume? Did they find you on LinkedIn? What was that? Then? Yeah, yeah, sure. So I actually at the time it was Dice, Dice.com, and Dice, I think okay. Dice is still around. I'm pretty sure, but. Yeah. I put my resume on uh, Dice, um, and they actually called me on Dice. Yeah, they, they, they called me up, and at that time, yeah, I was looking for something else. I wanted to kind of make the next jump up, yeah, so, yeah. So, I guess that's one of the questions, because so a lot of the, the newer people, they're at places like Geek Squad or whatever, and they mm -hmm. are scared crapless about if they put their resume out, their boss will find out, and then they'll sure. be scrubbing toilets for the next, you know, Sure, yeah, leave. absolutely. Um, do you think that's something to worry about? Um, I mean, I think, it's, I think it is a valid concern yeah. because everybody's interested in retaining talent, yeah, yeah. but you got to do what you got to do. You know, I mean, if, if you want to, yeah. you know, if you want to, if you want to put your resume out there, I mean, uh, I think it's worth having a fair conversation. You know, yeah. if, if you, I, my, my opinion is this, if you have a manager 
that is going to scold you because you're trying to get the best for you, yeah. then you need to change your manager anyway. You know what I mean? So I mean, I know that's maybe behind the sky advice when you're, you know, when you're in a hot seat, but that's that's how I've always felt. I mean, if your manager is not on your side, and he cannot accept that, hey man, I want to get the best for me, yeah. I want to get the best for my family, then it's, it's time for a change anyway. So, but okay. I, I, so to answer your question, I think that I understand the concern, but you also need to realize that you have to look out for yourself and do what's best for you, and everybody should be on your side. And if somebody is is not pointing you in the direction of allowing you to do what's best for you make those those best decisions for you yeah. then it's it, they're, they're irrelevant anyway so do you think especially at that level should you give the manager a heads up you're looking for a job or should you just give them the flat notice yeah i, I think that's a challenge in my opinion i have never given the manager that hey i think i'm going to quit like in six months I, I don't think that that's reasonable no manager should expect that from you yeah, yeah, yeah and also you're not i don't think you're required to do that because i think that that will kind of, you know, <laughs> you know I, I think you're giving them a little bit too much courtesy. Okay. You know, because now they say, well, you know, we have these projects coming up, but we're just gonna kind of send you around these. Yeah. And then what happens if something doesn't work out? And all of a sudden you can't make change. Now you're kind of, you know, the, you know, it, it, makes, it makes you look bad. So, so I would say that, um, you know, you know it, it, it really depends on how you, you phrase this, but telling a manager, hey, I'm going to quit in six months because I'm looking, uh, maybe that's not the right, not the right way to do it. Yeah. I mean, I, I have never done that, you know. Yeah. I, I've, I so I guess I'm not sure if I answered your question well, but <laughs> yeah, I, 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 th I think that you need to um, have these conversations maybe more subtly, you know, yeah. instead of just hey, I'm going to quit in six months. <laughs> yeah, okay. um, I'm thinking back. I'm thinking back about what I did. Um, I mean, the conversations I had when I was with Geek Squad, um, you know, I didn't really have a central manager per se. It was a little more diffuse, so it wasn't like yeah. I think everybody kind of knew. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody yeah. kind of knew, hey, this guy, we can see he's much more, he's kind of outgrown his role, so yeah. we know he's going to change. And in fact, after I quit, I, I'm yeah. still in, in contact with us. They said, yeah, Charles, we knew, we, we knew that you were going to move on. We knew that. So, yeah. so I, I suppose it wasn't relevant in that case. Yeah. Um, it, it, for, from SWC, when I quit there, um, I didn't really have any conversations except when I said, hey, listen, I'm ready to move on. Here's my two weeks. Yeah. But it ended up being, you know, I stayed, I think, another six weeks there, I think. You know, just, okay, yeah. you know, just to, hey, we need to finish up some projects. And leave on good terms. So yeah. I mean, you know, but that that was my experience. You know, so I, I don't know if I answered you too well there. Yeah, yeah, no, that's good. So I guess that is a question though with with the actual notice. So back in the day, two weeks was a standard. But yeah. now with technical stuff, and the fact of the matter is, you may actually be the only one that knows a lot of things. Do you think two weeks is still reasonable, or should you give four weeks? Would you get? Yeah, yeah, sure. So I would I would say you should work with you need to get the temperature. Yeah. of your employer and be flexible okay. but i think two weeks in most cases is not reasonable yeah. i mean unless you have a you know something that you just you know again head it you know <laughs> hat in hand yeah good attitude yeah and not screw you but if you really have something i have got to take this opportunity and i've got two weeks then yeah. they should work with you but i think that two weeks is is for most it jobs where you've got a highly technical role yeah. let's face it some of these jobs are very hard, difficult to fill yeah. and so someone with two weeks who's got the keys of the kingdom, it's really challenging wow. to not make things go into chaos. So I would say that for me, it's usually been uh, longer than that. Yeah. So, huh. so then you were, so you were with SWC for like three and a half years, mm -hmm. but then you flipped over to uh, NCMC as a WAN field engineer, but only because it, it's kind of weird. You've got all this stuff, long, 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 years, 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 and then you got this one, four months. Sure. Like what, yeah. was, what was that story then? Yeah, so I wanted to move down here, and okay. I took I took a contract role. Oh, okay. And um, it was something that I you know was, everything was is good, no problems with it. But when I got this, when I landed this role, yeah. I, I had the opportunity to work with Cisco, interview with them, yeah, okay. and so I was there already. And, I, and you know, when Cisco called me, I was like, listen, I'm I just you know, so I had a try, let me give you the backstory. I had tried to work at Cisco a few years earlier and I interviewed okay. four times and they didn't hire me. Okay. And so, you know, they came calling again after I had gotten this role down here in North Carolina. Uh -huh. And I said, you know, I would like, I, was, I would like to work for you. I, yeah. I would like to work, it's a big name. You know, there's lots of, you know, good reputation down here. But the last time I, I interviewed with you guys, you, you know, it was four interviews and I didn't get hired. So yeah. sure, I'll talk with you, but I'm not hopeful. So it turned out that, you know, after a few interviews, they hired me. So yeah. I, I was, you know, so that answer your question, it was really about, I was on a contract role versus getting a full-time role. So that's yeah. that's how that turned out. Ah, okay. So that well, was... there's a key point though, something to keep in mind here. Yeah. The opportunities usually don't come up at a convenient time. Yeah. You know, you <laughs> don't necessarily get the transition 
nice and clean. Yeah. Sometimes it happens when it's not very convenient. So you have to, you have to weigh that. That's life, right? You have to weigh that. You know, it yeah, may yeah. not happen. That great opportunity is not going to, okay, I'm sitting here and I'm waiting and it's just going to fall on my lap. Yeah. It just doesn't happen like that. It usually happens when, you know, you just had a kid or, you know, yeah, <laughs> and I have three, so, or, you know, something else is happening. So you got to yeah. keep that in mind. So that, that was a circumstance there. Oh. But then you were saying you took that to come here. So you're in Chicago. So nice, big, nice, big, juicy, techie city. So why yeah. would you come down here? What was the plan? There? Funny story about that too. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I wanted to move down here because I have family oh, and, okay. you know, and I, I, I love Chicago, great city, but when you start considering the cost of living yeah. and, you know, I have family down here, it was just, it was really kind of a, you know, 40, 60, maybe, you know, something yeah. like that, 45, 55 split. And we just, we decided, I literally, I think I had to flip a coin because it was like, yeah. I wanted to stay, yeah. but we knew that we just had our first daughter. So my wife and I got to the point where, you know, we needed to kind of get like settled in. Yeah. My daughter's going to be one year old. And so whatever we do right now is going to be pretty much permanent. So yeah. we decided to come down north, to North Carolina. Oh, okay. And that's an interesting thing. We were talking about this off camera before, about how this is actually an affordable place. So if you look at most tech centers in the country, you look at Silicon Valley and you're going to pay a million dollars for a box. If you look at Seattle, you're going to pay $800,000 for a box. You see the guy at Google that lives in a truck? What's that? The guy at Google lives in a truck? Oh, I've heard of that. Yeah, Yeah, so he actually literally lives in a (laughs) box. It's like a U-Haul truck. He put AC in and a generator. So yeah, yeah. you're right. Yeah, it's a box. I mean, you know, absolutely. But so that's the thing is you look at, you know, Seattle, Silicon Valley, even Austin, Boston, New York, all the major places you think of major tech centers. And they're ridiculously expensive. Not like expensive, ridiculously. Mm-hmm. And then around here, am I missing something? It seems like shockingly affordable. And, and when you've got so much, you've got tech, you've got Cisco, you've got NetApp, you've got all these companies here and yet... Like this is actually like a, a livable place, which doesn't make sense. Is that true? I actually, the more I think about it, I don't know either. I really don't know because you would think with all the, I mean, you've got so many, you know, RTP down here, yeah. and the pharmaceutical, not just tech, but pharmaceutical. Yeah. I don't know the answer. I don't know why that is. Right. But I mean, are you going to complain if you have to live, <laughs> if you want to live down here? Oh, so yeah. yeah, but it is true. I mean, you you can make about the same money. In fact, I'm making when I came down here. I didn't take a pay cut. <laughs> I made the same money. Yeah. And. Um, you know, my housing is half and my taxes are way less. You know? yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so go figure. I, 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 I don't know the answer. I don't know why this, but it's, it's just a reality. So I, yeah, I mean, right. you know, why, 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 why complain? <laughs> well, is, is there any kind of weird trade off here? Cause I mean, I've been wandering around and it all seems very nice. Is sure. There, yeah. yeah. There like some downside, you know, say? Uh, the trap, I would say, so culturally wise, you know, the food, you don't have the food you have like in Chicago. I'm just saying, for, <laughs> I mean, you don't have all the, just the, the different, uh, there was, for example, like a Lebanese restaurant my wife and I, we loved. And, you know, it, it, there, not that there aren't pockets of culture around here. It's, yeah. I would say, you know, it's not Chicago. You know, okay. so I would say if you're used to that big city, you'll definitely see that. Yeah. Um, a minor one, well, not minor for, for people who have allergies, but all, the, the pollen is terrible around here. You oh, see really? the yellow stuff around here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. See, I'm, <laughs> so, I'm driving out tonight, yeah. Yeah, so, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. the pollen is, uh, the humidity, you know, those are some things. But, yeah. I mean, you know, I, you know, I would say other than those, those, you know, relatively minor. I mean, I can't really think of any, like, uh, you know, terrible trade-offs. You know, yeah. you've got a good social group here. You know, there's lots of universities. So, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's a nice area, nice area. Yeah, okay. So then, so you were with NCEMC when Cisco right. called you up to want to hire you. That's right. Yep. They called me up yeah. um, and um, they said, hey, we've got this job with our, we're, we're, we have this new server line, UCS server. We see you've got VMware. Yeah. You know, you've got this, this experience. You've got this little niche where you've got VMware experience. Hmm. You've got server experience. But also if you've got like heavy networking. Yeah, and you know, okay, yeah. and there's there's people there's a lot of people in this, but it's it's harder to find than you might think that you've got lots of service experience and lots of like you know this core like BGP you know service provider type experience. That's yeah. actually harder to find. So I said we we want we're interested in talking to you because we need someone that can kind of bridge the gap. We, we you know we're, you know being Cisco, yeah. they had a hard time finding server people, right? Because they, again, their servers are new, and I said you know. That's interesting because I know nothing about your server, so why do you want to hire me? They're like, well, you know, <laughs> yeah. nobody knows anything about it, so we're willing to teach you. So, yeah, okay. so since, you know, they came knocking, did an interview, and I think in that it was, you know, it worked to my advantage to where I really had nothing to lose. And I'm not saying I was careless or yeah. flippant. I just was, I went to the interview, I was professional, yeah. but I really had no expectations. I was just 
I, you know, I'm going to interview, and they're probably not going to hire me. Yeah, yeah. But I'll interview, and then you know, I sat down with a panel. It was, I think, two hours. It was fairly grueling. They started asking me questions about things, and you know, one by one, all of a sudden, I was like, wow, this interview is going well. They're asking mm -hmm. me things about th that I know, you know, multicast, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. VMware. They're asking me problems that I've had in the field, and I said, yeah. wow, this is this is interesting. Maybe I have a shot with this. So. Huh. So did you run into any problems, especially at four months? Because what a lot of people don't realize is when you're a contractor for another company, there's all kinds of weird, I'm not sure it's non-competes the right thing, but basically like if Cisco steals you, that they then have to pay a stupid amount of money to the contractor, all that kind of stuff. Did you run into, was, did you see any of that? Did you have to deal with any kind of jumping through weird hoops? Yeah, so officially, because I had my resume at Cisco, yeah. officially I had applied at Cisco. So oh. it was. It wasn't that they were recruiting me away. Really? So okay. officially, that and they, 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 they're, they're Cisco is very ethical about that. They, they, yeah. they will. They are above board about things. Um, so I would say that there are those dynamics, though. Okay. Uh, let me give you an example. Yeah. When I was with SWC, um, we had a few engineers that were supporting a customer, and the customer wanted to hire them away. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. they worked out a compensation. So, so yes, there are those dynamics. Yeah, Another yeah. issue is if you, for example, are working with a Cisco partner, Cisco will understandably not hire from a partner. They, they will not poach from a partner because mm -hmm. it, it's just not the right thing to do, right? So, so mm -hmm. yes, I, I would say, personally, I haven't run into many obstacles, but I know of them. And so, yeah, those things usually can be worked out just yeah. depending on the parties. Okay. Um, and there is almost always a compensation piece to it. So <laughs> that works. So okay, so you were doing you were doing hands-on stuff with uh, Cisco Unified Computing, the UCS, and all mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And then so you're there for almost five years, four and a half years, and then you go and be an education specialist. Right. So, yeah. So uh, I've been at Cisco about five years, and so yeah. I was two years with the UCS team. Oh, yeah. And then uh, you know I really still had this passion for like core route switch stuff. You okay. know. And so there was a role that came up that actually um, was a route switch instructor role. Hmm. And I said, boy, I'm interested in that. I'm going to jump on that. So okay. I did that for about two years. Yeah. And so that, that just kind of brought me back from the server world, virtualization world, back into core route switch stuff. So it was yeah. just another kind of, you know, get, me, get back into an area that I was a little rusty on. But I, it was something that I really wanted to get back into. And uh, so I did about for two years. Yeah. And then um, after that, I actually went back to tech just because I wanted to get into the data. So, so right now, currently, I'm with that. So I, tech, yeah. teaching, tech. So. tech. so then did you did you find any issues with that, like going from hands-on to education? Yeah, it was interesting because when you're in education, yeah. I, I was talking to some other engineers, and they made the comment, and we were discussing, I, I forget we were discussing, it was, and they were actually from NetApp, and yeah. we were discussing like, um, you know, just some Nexus stuff, and they said, well, you know, you're, you're a teaching role. You know, yeah. are you really like, you know, yeah. do you think you'd actually be able to do like an engineering job again? Yeah. And I was like, wow, they don't really respect teachers, do they? Yeah, <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So I would say that there was definitely, with certain pockets, you have perception where you're teaching, so maybe you're not, maybe you don't have real practical skills you know maybe yeah. you're just you're kind of out of touch maybe you're kind of like you know pedantic and hot you know pie in the sky but not really down to earth with the, the types of problems that we have. so so i'd say yeah. there is that perception potentially have a perception while you're teaching so. yeah okay do you think that could help that could damage your career if you were doing it for too long boy i would that's a good question um i think that if you only taught i yeah. think so yeah really? i think so i think that you know if you're going to teach I think that it gives you credibility if you've actually if you've worked in the industry, you know, yeah, if, yeah. or or maybe maybe you don't do full, maybe maybe do consulting on the side, yeah. but I do think that to stay relevant, I think you need to have a good foundation actually practically working with the technologies. If you just yeah. if you're just academic, you know, you got a yeah. book and you read a book for exam, I think it does hurt you a little bit. Yeah. I, th I think it's good to have that real world experience. Again, there's a number of ways to get that, but I think that you need to have something to be able to teach from a first-hand standpoint. Otherwise, yeah. otherwise, you're not gonna be relevant as a teacher if you can't yeah. talk about, you know, if you're talking about a routing protocol, what problems have you seen in the real world? You know, yeah. how have you troubleshot this? If you don't have those experiences, it's gonna be, it's gonna be difficult to, to be a good instructor. So then when you were doing the, the teaching, were you just going, was it paint by numbers essentially, or were you creating your own training programs? Yeah, good question. So the uh, the, the pro what I was teaching we we, ha we have we had boot camps. Yeah, yeah. You know, for example, we had a routing protocols boot camp. So 
there was a fairly, uh, I wouldn't say there was a lot of structure, but there was a fairly you know, laid out what we're gonna teach. So for example, on our bootcamp, we taught yeah. EIGRP, OSPF, BGP. Yeah. Um, and I had a good deal of leeway on how I taught those. Okay, okay. so I would say from a high level, the content was, you know, what we're gonna cover was, was fairly structured, but how I taught it was, was up to me. And yeah. so one of the things that you know, I like to do is, is, is you know, try to avoid using lots of slides, for example, yeah. and use hands-on, let me show you how this protocol works. So I would say there was uh, just a high level kind of, here's, here's what we want to end up at. Yeah. But in terms of the content, I, I, I really just kind of did my own thing and that seemed to work well. Right. So then you've, you've had the hands on, you've had the education now, and you've been with Cisco now for quite a while, right? Six, seven years. It's, it's my, I'm in my fifth year now, yeah. yeah. So do you plan to, will you stay with Cisco for a long, long time? Yeah, I don't see going anywhere. I'm really happy with Cisco. Really? I mean, I don't see, um, because how? Because uh, we've had a lot of people, and maybe it's maybe it's the difference in how long people have been there. But mm -hmm. I've talked with some people, and a lot of people like it. But then there's a lot of people that say, you know, oh, it was a lot better, and now mm -hmm. it's become. And you can really see it on their face. They're not just kind of being snarky about it. They really are like Cisco has changed. So sure. you seem very happy with it. Do you not see? Yeah, I mean, at a big, there? I would, I would let me put it this way. Um, at a very big company. I mean, you can definitely get pockets of culture, let's put it that way. And yeah. I have nothing bad to say about Cisco. I've had, I have only positive experiences. Yeah. Um, I have great managers. The culture is fabulous. Yeah. You know, I'm not saying that people can't have a bad experience, but that can happen anywhere, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean, I understand that there, there's that element to people say, well, Cisco is not what it used to be. You know, it was in the good old days, <laughs> but that's people also don't remember things as you know the well, same too. So so I I would say overall I I, I couldn't have asked for a better employer. Let, let's put it that way. So then, what do you face? So you're like 39, 40 ish, um, and so you're getting to that. Oh, and I know I'm about there. You get to that really like weird point mm -hmm. where. You know, most people figure, you know, from your 20s to your 40s to about 40, you're doing all the hands-on stuff. And mm -hmm. then from 40 on, you start transitioning to management. Mm -hmm. And I was talking with somebody yesterday who was like 55 and still doing hands-on. And he even said, being 55 and hands-on, he does get a little scared for his job. Mm -hmm. So are you looking at transitioning? Like, what do you see your next decade? What do you think? You, what, what, would you, what would you expect your next decade to look like? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. I mean, I, I would not... I mean, I understand that that mold is kind of there, yeah. but I just can't see fitting into that mold. You know, I want to mm -hmm. do what is um, is intellectually satisfying, yeah. and I don't see, for example, going to management. Huh. Um, okay. I would say that. Uh, I mean, you had, you had a, let me try and address all those things. So, one of yeah. you mentioned was job security, kind of like you know, you get you get a little bit older and maybe less energy, and you know, yeah. um, you know, the younger guy comes in. I mean. I'm sure that element's there, but we won't solve that problem right now. <laughs> I would say that if you are very good at what we do, I mean, you need, you need good people everywhere, yeah. right? I think if you're, very, if you're relevant, you have relevant skills, and you're an excellent problem solver, yeah. you know, A plus engineer, I mean, there's a lot of B plus, B minus engineers out there. If you can be an A plus engineer, yeah. you're gonna be very in demand. So I don't see myself going into management. I like what I'm doing, I like the, like yeah. the everyday challenges of working on customer problems, now that might not be in the same role, yeah. but I really like to work on actual problems. So that's, I, I, in a nutshell, that's my answer. <laughs> that's right. Okay. So would you do you think maybe like project management or just just stay with attack kind of hands on? I really like staying with attack. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I really yeah. do. I just I don't see myself project managing. Yeah. Um, I, I actually that's distasteful to me. I, I you <laughs> know, I, I, yeah, I, that is something that I would like. I would, I, I would not like to do. I know I'm sure. Really? Wow, okay. More I would probably more enjoy management than anyone else. You know. So now I will say in tech. A lot of our managers are former tech engineers, yeah. and we joke with them, you know, how untechnical they are now. So, I mean, I, you know, I, that's the best answer I can give you. I just right now, I enjoy solving challenging problems. It's yeah. the only thing that really kind of gets me up in the morning. You know, yeah. is that you know, and you go to bed at night, maybe you worked on a problem, something, you know, some switch is doing something that wow, I've never seen that before, and it just really gets you going. Yeah. It's really fun when things don't behave and to solve that problem for the customer, you know, and um, work with other engineers, yeah. it's very, it's very satisfying. So I just, I can't see getting outside of that. Oh, okay. But then with Cisco then, cause one of the issues too with hands-on is you start having kids, you start getting, mm -hmm. and work-life balance. The thing is the more hands-on you are, you, you usually the worse the work-life balance is. So sure. how, how does that work out for you in Cisco? Yeah, sure. Good question. So I mean the work-life balance, obviously in terms of having kids and everything, yeah you have to figure out where your sacrifices are gonna be. One of the things that I don't have anymore is yeah. 
I cannot go home and study for six hours at night. You know, I mean, so, so for example, right now I've got, I got, you know, you, you know my search, I've got VCP, I've got MCSC, yeah. I've got CCNA, CC, uh, CCMP. Yeah. Um, I don't have my CCI yet because yeah. I don't have the time to invest to get that as quickly. Is it on the roadmap? Absolutely. Am I yeah. working on it? Absolutely, I am. I got my master's a few years ago, okay? Yeah. I had to make a decision. That, that's right after we had our, our second child. Yeah. I could get my master's now or I can go for the CCI. I, I decided to get the master's degree. Okay. And I said, I'm going to get the master's now and I will, the CCI is, it's still on the roadmap. I'm still working on it. Yeah. It's just going to take more time. Yeah. So I'd say that, you know, there are those sacrifices to where you just don't get to study as much as you used to, right? Yeah, yeah. But I will say this though. One offshoot benefit is, is that when you have less time when you're at work, you know that you're not going to be able to go home and work on this problem. Yeah. You become super efficient. You become super focused. I found that I'm able to be much more focused because I know that I have 90 minutes working on this problem. And if I do not solve it now, it's going to be staring at me tomorrow. So you become more efficient. So I, I would say that it's not as bad as, you know, once you have kids and things, it's yeah. not as bad. But, but yes, there are those very real sacrifices, you know, choices you have to make. Where are you going to prioritize it? So. Yeah. All right. And then, so that's interesting because I've been talking with people and you guys apparently are like the smartest people in the world down here because you have folks like getting their CCIEs in like six months and mm -hmm. like double CCIEs and like literally I was just talking to one person with a double CCIE explaining why a triple C he could do a triple CCIE but then people look down on you if you have a triple C <laughs> I'm like, what the hell like at least where I'm from like a CCI is like wah so why so in 2010 you decided to go for network engineering management master's degree mm -hmm. So why, why, why that, does, especially if you want to stay hands, curiously enough, because you want to stay hands on, I would thought you would go CCIE. Why sure. do you go masters? So the masters is, doesn't expire, <laughs> <Quite honestly. laughs> you know, I mean, a masters, I would say that the CCIE is, I mean, obviously it's an industry wide recognition, but the masters is going to have wider appeal in, in other domains. Right. So yeah. if, if I take a master's degree, to let's say, I don't know, a healthcare, you know, I want to position a healthcare, yeah. the HR is going to understand a master's degree versus probably understand a master's degree over CCIE. So okay. I would say that there are some advantages of having that master's degree. And again, it's what you get it and it's done. I don't have to renew it. So, yeah. but it, it wasn't like, it wasn't like black or white. Don't get, it wasn't like, oh, I must get it. I, I wanted to do both, but I had to yeah. make a decision. So, oh, yeah. And then you went to DePaul University. Uh -huh. Was there any was there any decision process on that? Why that versus somewhere else? Sure. Yeah. So funny, the the person that hired me at Wright College ten years earlier, yeah, yeah. I just sent them a random email and I asked her. I said, "Listen, I'm looking at a master's degree. Can you tell me what schools are you know like for for technology for yeah. networking? What are you seeing as good?" And and she gave me a list of five schools. And quite honestly, DePaul was the least expensive. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's that's what I went with. Um, okay. And that's that's all. I, I need. I wanted to settle on a master's degree. Yeah. And you know that a degree is, um, uh, you know, you forget half of, the, yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know, after a few years. Yeah. So I mean, it's something that you get. And uh, you know, the, the classes I took were, were network engineering. And so um, it was just kind of like that credential you get that is, you know. From the Paul, you know, I, I got it, and just just to have it there, you know, and I mean, you know, I, I felt, you know, I'm not trivializing, but it's it's an important part of your resume, right? Yeah, it's man. it's something to have on there. It's, I think, and I think it adds balance to your resume. So, you know, not you, you know, you have to have experience, yeah. you know, college and certification. I think I think that that those three things together, you know, if you have all experience, yeah. and the, you don't have the other two, then you know. It's harder to get a job. Let's face it, right? So fair enough. Now, was that was that an online or an in-person school? Yeah, it's actually both. Um, they actually the program I was in, and that was, that was another important aspect because I knew that I wanted to be mobile. Yeah. Is that it was actually distance learning program or in class? Okay. Identical class. They record the classes, and then you can do it. So. After one year of doing that, I realized it was way better to sit in my underwear and go to class versus having to you know, take the train downtown every night. Oh, Just okay. way better. So, I mean, you know, I, I think, you know, there's no reason to go to class anymore. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. So then you got, okay, so that's your master's, but then you've got a whole, whoops, where is it? There's somewhere in here. You got a pile of certifications. Somewhere you got a pile of certifications. So you have a lot of stuff. So you've got your CCMP, your CCNA, your VMware, your MCITP, your MCSE. So where did those certifications come in? Did you get those because you needed them, just because? How did that feel? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, I didn't sit down with some grand plan and say, boy, in 10 years, I'm going to have eight certifications. It wasn't anything like that. Yeah. It was fairly pragmatic. It was okay. kind of like the first certifications, the A+, plus, for example, lower level ones. Yeah. And when I say lower, I don't mean anything condescending. I just mean they were just yeah. their entry level certs. Yeah. 
I got those, as I mentioned before, just to have something to show for my efforts to get to get into the industry. I, I felt those, those those were a natural result. Some of the Microsoft certs were a partner requirement. We had to have those. Oh, yeah, okay. so it wasn't that I just got it because hey, I want to you know show. I got it because we're a partner and we need this, and so I'll yeah. do it. You know, and so um, that, those are a few of the Microsoft certs. And then I maintain the Microsoft certs because once you earn it, you kind of want to. You know, it's, it doesn't make sense to let it expire. No. The Cisco certification, on the other hand, there was no requirement for those. <laughs> I got my CCNA just because someone said, hey, we want you to get some more networking skills. But that was the one that really was, to me, the, I don't know, the, you know, I don't know, life changer. I don't, I don't, know what the, I don't want to sound corny or anything, but that was the one that really uh. opened my eyes to networking. Huh. And I got the CCNA and I, I, I built a lab yeah. and um, on eBay, I got all the equipment yeah. and I, I really sat down and buckled down. It was the first certification that I thought, wow, this is, I just, this is very difficult. Hmm. I just got my teeth kicked in. When I went and failed for it, I just got my teeth kicked in, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was the same time. You, know, you go one of two directions there. You're going to give up or you're going to try harder. Yeah. And I was almost at the point, why? Am I really cut off for this? And I said, no, I'm going to keep going. I'm, yeah. I'm going to get And so you know, I set up the hardware. I got router switches. And it was just, it was so fun. The journey was fun. Yeah, you know? And yeah. so that's, that's what really got me kind of into a, you know, turn the quarter into IT and just kind of this whole new world of, of different technology. You know, brought in protocols and, and BGB things I never heard of before. Yeah, so yeah. that's that's what the you know, kind of Cisco. And then yeah. after that, I said, well, if CCNA is this good, I guess the CCMP is good. And then, and then I just got completely humiliated when I first took the CCMP routing. I just oh. got destroyed on it. But oh, yeah. but again, it was another, it had to do the whole thing over, yeah. but at a higher level. Okay. So that's yeah. that's it. That's cool. And then you, so you have a VMware certi uh, certificate too for mm -hmm. Professional Five. Um, there's a big question. So I get from a question from a lot of people. They want to get into cloud computing, and so they all want to go for that VMware certification. Mm -hmm. Is that a good certification if you just want to go cloud? Is it a good generic certification, or should you only do it if you're going to use VMware? Well, I mean, VMware is so prolific. I mean, almost everybody has some virtualization in their network, and the biggest. I mean, the, the biggest vendor is VMware. It's yeah, most yeah. widely deployed. Okay. So in my, in my mind, just by virtue of the, the deploy base, it makes sense to get familiar with something that you're probably going to run into in the field. Okay? Okay, yeah, yeah. Now, in my, in my case for the VCP, uh, the reason why I got it was because uh, Cisco is an ASP for VMware. So we actually were supporting VMware. Okay. So it was a requirement to, uh, to maintain that. We had to have our VCP. Um, now, I may have done it anyway, yeah. but that was what really fueled that. And yeah. of course, the, there's a class requirement with that, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So, but I will say for the VCP, you, know, you mentioned like cloud computing. I mean, listen, there's so much to know out there, so many yeah. different products. There's no way you're going to get a cert that is like, boy, I want this to be 100% relevant. Listen, man, you're going to get a cert, and you may never touch let's say 80% of that, yeah. but it's gonna help you become a better engineer. Mm -hmm. You know, you're gonna sit down, if, if you do it right, if you do it right, yeah. sit down, set a lab up, you know, watch someone, watch a good instructor for those areas that you need, get training on. A highly, video on demand is, is and I'm not saying this because we're at INI, I'm saying it because <laughs> video on demand is, I mean, it's the way to go. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's, the, it's the best thing. And if you can afford a boot camp, by all means do a boot camp. But the, um, the you know, in terms of the cloud and stuff, there's so much to know out there. Just pick something that interests you. Okay. And you, you, you'll be, you'll, you will be, I think you'll be satisfied. But don't expect that, boy, I'm going to get a cert. Now, boy, I'm the, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm the, you know, you have so many different cert, you know, so many different providers. There's Amazon and, yeah. I mean, Opens, I mean, there's so many things. You just, you can't expect to get a certified in all of it, so. Now, that's one thing with, with Cisco, because you've got these certifications. And so, I was talking with people before about whether Cisco helps you train in things like Juniper. And, uh, but, like, with MCSE and all that kind of stuff, do they, do they have, um, Oh, tuition assistance or whatever. Like, if you didn't have your MCSE, would they help you get your MCSE? So, are you talking about like Cisco? Would they give you assistance on get? Yeah, obviously you get Cisco assistance. But sure. if you were going for like something a different type of certification, would they help you? It all depends on the business case. No, really. That's I mean, like if you can, you know. And I think most managers, if you are looking at professional development, yeah. most managers are going to consider anything reasonable. You know, whether it's you know helping you pay for some books or yeah. a class or yeah. Um, you know, your certification voucher, of course. Yeah. I, I, you know, it's not across, I don't think there's any hard and fast rule, but I think most, if you're, if you're gonna manage to say, hey, I wanna become a better engineer, mm -hmm. and I, I think this will help me, and it's, it, it's at least somewhat relevant to your job role, I don't see any, any managers that have a problem with that. So the answer to your question is that yes, I've had, I've had help with 
you know, paying for vouchers and classes, that sort of thing. So. And so they will pay, help you pay for even like books. It doesn't have to be a regimented, you know, this is a boot camp or something. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. again, it's, it's all going to be, I think it's, it's just discretionary, but absolutely. absolutely. And actually, um, one of the nice things about Cisco is that um, we have the Safari, I don't know if you're, the, the um, Safari online books subscription. No. Everyone gets that. I mean, if you want it, you can get it for free. So Safari Books Online huh. has basically, you know, there's, 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 lots and lots of books on our Microsoft. So yeah. that's one resource we have. But yeah, I mean, that's your question that I think it's all about um, if you show, if you got the enthusiasm yeah. and you, you want to do something, what manager is going to stop you if you can make a good, you know, if, if, if you want to professionally develop yourself? Yeah. I mean, they, they shouldn't, right? Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> and then I guess the final thing we're going into is then, so you actually have publications on mm -hmm. your thing. So Microsoft Network Load Balancing on UCS-B Series Servers um, from Cisco Systems. So now, when you have publications on your LinkedIn profile, is this just, is this just a gold star? Hey, it's something nicer than a uh, blog post or is this something useful for your career? Yeah, yeah, sure, absolutely. So, um, you know, one of my motivations, you know, link, you mentioned LinkedIn. Yeah. I mean, you've just, you've just got to be able to market yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you have to be able to, and it's not a pompous or arrogant thing. I mean, it can be, but it, it's, <laughs> you know, it's one of the things that you need to in the industry, you need to be able to demonstrate your value. Yeah, you know, yeah. and so having a LinkedIn page, LinkedIn page, a resume is a way to market yourself. Yeah. So I would say that the publication is twofold. It was written to solve a very practical problem at the time. Yeah. But putting it on my LinkedIn page is, hey, this is what I've written. Here's what I've worked on. Okay. Does this mean I'm an expert at every aspect of Microsoft? No, it doesn't. It just means that I worked on this problem. Yeah. It was an important problem. We solved a problem the customer had. And this is the result of that. Okay. So I would say that it's there's always a little bit of marketing, and if it's on LinkedIn, it's always marketing. Yeah. <laughs> so so since this is with Cisco Systems, is this like a white paper I would download, or is it part of a book? Yeah, no, this is this is a an external. We can call it a white paper. Yeah, yeah. it's it's a page there, um, and Cisco definitely encourages um, uh, any any type of public document yeah. if it's relevant to a customer problem. Uh, we want to get that out there. Yeah. Quite honestly. We don't want you to call us if we can solve it with a, you know, <laughs> let's be honest, you know if we can solve your problem and you don't have to make a phone call yeah. and we put a document out there, that's that's better for us, you know. Okay. And so um, there's definitely encourage Cisco encourages you to, to to publish if you you know if you've got something important yeah. that needs to be said. And obviously there's a channel, there's some right channels to go through there, and um, it's really about just providing good information for the customer. That's that's what it comes down to. And now is it is it hard to get published through them like? Obviously, there has to be some red tape, but is it, do you, you know, get it thrown back? Do you figure out how to use a comma or anything like yeah, that? Yeah, I mean, there's, you know, we, we have professional writers that there's yeah. just some guidelines you have to follow. Okay. Um, I think that that isn't the hard part, though. They'll, they'll help you format it. And, and it's, I mean, you know, they've, I've seen them kick back things for formatting issues. I've never had a problem with that. Um, but, you know, I think that if you just understand their formatting, yeah. it's not an issue. Again, because I, I was teaching for a few years there, yeah. okay. I got to know like some, some people and they helped me, you know, hey, this is all format. So, so I'd say, yeah, I wouldn't say there's a great red, red tape. I mean, the most important thing is, is that do you have something important to say that should be published worthy? That, that's the most yeah. important. That, that's the hard part. Once you get that, everything else is just details. Oh, so. okay. And then, so with your career, it seems to be trucking along pretty well. So is there anything that you would have done differently? Sure. Yeah, I would have gotten. I mean, you know, if, if we're if we're investing with hindsight, which you're not, <laughs> you can't do that. But yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. so if we had a time machine to go back, I absolutely would have uh, started way earlier. Yeah, invested yeah. in the things that I did about four years earlier. Yeah. Okay. Um, because it was a lack of confidence that's kind of stalled it, you know. And yeah. I waited until I just couldn't stand what I was doing to get into IT. Yeah. And um, I would have I would have done it sooner and had more confidence. Yeah. You know, what I mean, if if you've got that drive, and you you know you want to want to accomplish something, I mean, it's a great industry. There's a lot. There's no shortage of work, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not like we have a work shortage. So, uh, but the answer question, yeah, I, I would have done it much sooner. That's sooner. that's what I've invested sooner. And then going forward, so if you had a kid that was 18 or 19, mm -hmm. obviously the technology world in the past decade, like everything else, has changed a lot. So how you got in 10 years ago, like I say, when I tell people how I got in 15 years ago, I would not give you the same advice. It would be stupid advice today. Mm -hmm. So what would you, if you had an 18 year old kid who wanted to get into this, what would you tell them to do? What would be your advice for now? Look, man, there's something that isn't gonna be go out of style, it's, it's good work ethic. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you know, <laughs> do not take a job 
that you think that you're better than. Huh, okay, I mean, yeah. you know, whatever you're doing, do the best of your ability. That, that would be my advice. So, yeah. so yes, technology changes. I mean, next, you know, next year we could be, you know, who knows what's going to come out. Yeah. That's all going to change. Knowledge is relative, but your work ethic, your reputation, you're going to carry that with you forever. You, you will not shake that. I mean, this industry, especially in this area, yeah. you'd be surprised of how small, you know, this person's heard of that person. Yeah. So first and foremost is reputation, work yeah. ethic. Yeah. And then, you know, along with that is you have to think about problem solving. People want good problem solvers. Yeah. You know, whatever domain you're applying it to, okay, you need to learn the technology, you know, be that learner. So after you get the, I said the character, the personal things right, yeah. you have to be a lifelong student. You're never going to stop learning in IT. I, I, don't, I don't think that's going to change ever. You know, there's always going to be something, things are not going to get so automated to where we, uh, you know, we don't have to, do, I, I doubt it. I doubt things are so automated that we don't need good problem solvers. So, yeah. so um, work ethic, reputation, problem solver. Those, those are the things that, that are kind of, I think are kind of timeless. Do you think there's any technology you would focus on though? Or would you still focus on Cisco or if you're like, you know, like. You sure, know, yeah. You... Yeah, sure, it's a good question. Um, well, that's, a, that's a good question. I mean, I would say this. The way you can kind of insulate yourself from that is don't get too heavily invested in one technology. Hmm. You know, Perfect. so okay. for example, don't, I mean, years, you know, let's say 10, 15 years ago, if, for example, if you were an awesome routing guy, yeah. hey, man, that's, you were set but not, not really so anymore. Yeah. yeah, we have a need for those people, but boy, you need to understand convergence. There's, there's, things are so wide now. So I would say yeah. um, try to get a good understanding of applica how applications work, you know, servers, yeah, okay. but don't invest in one technology hmm. too heavily, too yeah, heavily, yeah. you know. Okay, if you like Cisco and you're interested in that, sure, get your CCIE, but also try to, try to do your VMware. So and actually, by the way, Cisco certifications, we're pulling in SDN now, so it's not going to be you know this monolithic. Cisco is definitely working very hard to keep things relevant. Yeah. Um, so you know, conversion with VMware. So I mean, you know, g get your VMware and get your Cisco. You know, try try to stay a little diverse. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. So I think I think I answered your question. Yeah, yeah, okay. And then the final final question. Then since you've got kids and you moved down here. Do you see this as a good area? Like when your kids are adults, when your kids are 30, do you think this will still be a good, good area for technology? I mean, my kids will probably want to move back to the city. I don't know. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I mean, they're, probably gonna move, they're probably going to want to move away from us. <laughs> yeah, okay. I mean, right now it is. Yeah, yeah. But who knows what's going to happen, yeah, right? Okay. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. I mean, we're, I think, you know, I mean, uh, who knows what tomorrow's going to bring. I mean, yeah. uh, by, all, by all accounts, I mean, if we look at economics, Things are growing here, lots of area for growth. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of economic reasons, so I think so, but what do I know? <laughs> <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. All right, well, thank you for uh, coming here today. Absolutely, thank yeah. you. So this was uh, Charles Stizza, Customer Support Engineer at Cisco Systems. Yet another interview that I enjoyed doing. I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one.